was brought up in this wonderful little English market town called Dursley. But luckily we had a fabulous choir in the church. And uh, so I joined the choir when I was about nine and learned to sight sing and all of that. And so I was always interested in music and there was a piano at home and my mother played a bit and my father was a church organist. When I was about 12 or 13 in school, someone brought in a Louis Armstrong record. I was absolutely smitten by uh, by this music, by the the fact that it was improvised, that it was so majestic and melodic, and that it swung. <laughs> I was lucky in a way because I was first turned on by the beginnings of jazz. So even though the, those beginnings of jazz were starting in like 1920s, in the 50s, I was starting at the same time and, uh, you know, got more modern and uh, just, I took it all in. Eventually decided I wanted to be a clarinet player. So I, I got a clarinet when I was about 14 and uh, took lessons at school. And, and I got really pretty decent on clarinet. And in fact, when I was about 21, I joined a band that was professional and traveling. And uh, we went all through England and we went to Switzerland, I remember. And it was around that time that I decided I wanted to be better trained. And this course had just popped up in England. It was 1968. And in England, there was no such thing as a jazz course at a music college. It was just the second year of that course, and I sent away uh, for an application. I did an audition, and uh, I got in. I got accepted. One day I was in a practice room and someone knocked on the door and said, are you working on Saturday? And I said, no, well, you've got a gig. And I was playing the piano, so, oh, I got a gig. So it turned out that the change to piano was more of a practical thing. There was more work <laughs> playing the piano than the clarinet. So it gradually slipped over to that. At the end of uh, college, I was about two weeks away from the final exams. There was a guy who was going to Hong Kong and he needed a trio would I like to go, six month contract? And I thought that sounds much more fun than taking exams, so why not? So I did. I asked my teacher, what should I try? Should I paint pictures? Should I sing songs? This was a wise reply. Okay, sit sit
I mean, I've been uh, pessimistic lately that I say to friends, um, especially my age, you know, if I was 30 instead of 70, I'd probably not be a professional musician. Because the thing about jazz musicians, we know it's, you know, a precarious business, precarious living. It's not very popular. A lot of us think about this a lot because you think, you know, is it useless what we're doing? Why are we doing this? In a way, jazz is fully formed. Nothing drastically new has happened in 40, 50 years, maybe. So you often wonder, well, why am I doing this? Well, the reason we're doing it, A, is it's lovely, and B, is, be, is to play live, I think, is the important thing. Because if... You know, if I'm playing jazz somewhere and a young person comes in who hasn't been exposed to it and says, oh, I quite like that. What's that? Maybe I'll find out more about that. Then everything has been worthwhile. Thank you.